Greetings everyone and welcome to my three key takeaways from developing with Flutter Web. Over the past few months, I've worked a lot with Flutter Web, playing around with it, trying to test its limits and it was important for me to share my insights with you since I feel like there's lots of discussing and arguing whether Flutter Web is a viable alternative for web development. And I'm definitely not going to settle this argument, but I can contribute and share the experience I've gained so far with you. I've tried to sum it up in three concise key takeaways for which I do not only want to talk about it in general, but also show some concrete examples wherever I can. Also make sure to stay tuned until the end because I'm going to give a little sneak peek about the upcoming Flutter web project I will be working on and sharing with you. So stay tuned and enjoy the video. So let's jump right into the first key takeaway, which is Flutter Web still has a long way to go. What I mean by that is there are still many issues to be addressed to qualify Flutter Web as a common framework to use for web development. I've briefly mentioned these downsides in my three reasons why I choose Flutter Web for my developer portfolio, but want to go a bit more into detail here. One thing, for example, is search engine optimization. If I want my website to be SEO optimized, Flutter Web currently does not really provide a proper built-in default way of allowing web crawlers to analyze my site. There are some workarounds like adding explicit tags for example, but it's still not as perfect. If you're interested in this topic, I would recommend checking out this GitHub issue over here where people keep uploading alternative ways to enable SEO for their Flutter websites. But next to SEO or maybe some packages not properly working in Flutter Web, what really bothers me the most is that Flutter websites do not really feel like a website. I mean, in a way it is obvious due to how Flutter generally works and renders its applications. But still there's a striking discrepancy between what I as a user expect and what I get when interacting with the website's content. Let's take interacting with text for example. By default, I wouldn't be able to interact with text widgets at all. And even if I exchange my text widgets with a selectable text widget, I wouldn't be able to, for example, highlight two different widgets at the same time, let alone deselect them by simply clicking somewhere else. Similar problem is scrolling, for example, which, if you look closely, is not as smooth. But I don't want to be too much of a naysayer, still I think it's important to also talk about these downsides as I've experienced them firsthand. My second key takeaway is that it's all about responsiveness. Now every halfway experienced web developer will say, well, isn't that kind of obvious? Well, yeah, it is. But the reason I'm mentioning it or why I think this is such a key aspect is that, in my opinion, you really need to know how to create responsive layouts in Flutter. And this is probably one of the points I spend most of my time with, namely to play around with widgets trying to find a setup suiting all different kinds of screens, from a huge monitor screen to a small smartphone screen. My initial approach was to basically use media query for everything I could lay my hands on, swapping arbitrary numbers to just avoid this one render overflow. But that can't be the perfect solution, can it? So I started diving deeper into in which situations media query can be replaced by even easier methods of enabling responsiveness. One very simple example I want to share with you is the following. I've got these three containers with different percentages of the screen height. Now instead of using the screen height for every container, I could also just wrap each container with a flexible widget and assign a flex value representing the same percentage I've previously given. The result in the end is the same, but it showed me a good way of not having to use media query for every situation where I want responsiveness. So you can see it's just one small exemplary change, reflecting my process of learning while developing with Flutter Web. Coming to my third and last key takeaway, I want to lift the spirits a bit after bashing Flutter Web in the beginning and talk about its potential. In my opinion, Flutter Web can be a good tool for a limited amount of use cases. For all of you Flutter enthusiasts out there, you know what Flutter is capable of and how quickly and easy you can develop beautiful user interfaces. Yes, it doesn't outperform other web development frameworks and maybe Flutter websites don't feel like real websites, but what if it doesn't have to for these limited amount of use cases? 
All I'm trying to say here is that my initial statement, Flutter still has a long way to go, can also be interpreted in a positive way, because we are part of something that is continuously growing. Take this GitHub issue for example. People are coming up with new ideas, creative alternatives that may in the end lead to the desired result. So I personally will definitely keep working with Flutter Web for various reasons. If you want to know more about these reasons, also check out my previous video. And as I promised in the beginning, I want to give a little sneak peek of what project comes next. For a university project, I'm going to develop a website for an escape room game. This escape room game is meant to be used in classes for younger pupils to get to know selected topics of computer science. And of course, I will share the project with you guys as well. We will look into aspects about user interface design, but also how to create pin code fields for verification, for example. And maybe I will also try to somehow integrate Firebase in all this, although I'm not quite sure yet for what use case it could be useful for. So if you've got an idea, please let me know. I'm all ears for great suggestions. And that's already it for today. Thank you very much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, feel free to share your experience and opinion on this topic. I'd love to hear from you what you think. Goodbye and have a nice day.